I didn't know nothing about music that much. And then they broke up. But I like Never Say Die. And they had done something on Don Kirshner's or the other one that was really good for Never Say Die. And I liked it. So I liked Never Say Die. And they broke up. But I started getting more, more and more into Ozzy. And then, like my 16th, after my mother died, that February, I went down to 22nd Street in New York Avenue. And I bought a $10 bag of THC Crystal, which was basically fucking Gorilla Biscuits, a.k.a. Angel Dust, Animal Tranquilizers, me and this other dude. And I went and bought fucking Master Reality on the way home. And I went home. I was living in my friend's house. He was out on a date. I locked the room. I put Master Reality on, and The Exorcist was on. And I put The Exorcist on with no volume, listening to Master Reality on that fucking Gorilla Biscuits. And Rudy says, I thought my heart was going to blow up. So I just turned off the TV and never listened to Master Reality till about eight years later, dog. If I went to a party, you put Master Reality on, I'd leave. It's like when I hear the music from Star Trek, I have a heart attack. <laughs> that in the beginning of Star Trek, I, I got to leave the room. The old Star Trek, the original, I don't like that music. That what music's... What don't you like about it? I don't know. It just scares the shit out of me, all right? I don't know what it is about the beginning of Star Trek. It fucks my world up. Oh, my God. How old were you when they came out? Who? You. The, uh, the Star Wars movies. I have no fucking idea. Star Trek. Not Star Wars, you fuck. Oh, Star, Star Trek. Trek. Oh, okay. The TV show. Oh, okay. But when Ozzy, that whole thing blew up. My mother had died. I was out every day partying with my friends, and I used to hang out with a dude named John Crowley. What a fucking small world. And John Crowley, listen, we were at a movie theater once in Fairview. You know what Fairview is? Yeah. They, when we were kids, there was a Carvel there, and there was a double movie theater. And every Saturday night, they played the Rocky Horror Picture Show and a concert movie. Neil Young, The Song Remains the Same, ba 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 whatever. We went there once and there was a line for the song remains the same or whatever the fuck we we're gonna go see. I go, John, we gotta cut this line. John goes, let me do it. When we walked to the door, there was an ice cream cone that somebody was eating that they put it upside down and had ants on it and shit and it was already melting. This motherfucker picked up the ice cream cone with the ants on it uh -huh. and in the front of the line started eating the ice cream cone. They let him cut in. Nobody said two words to him. You understand me? We get into the movie theater, and before the movie's about to start, I go, John, go up to the front there and talk to these people. Tell them what's going on here. <laughs> Rudy, he would do it. He would get up and go to the fucking to the fucking uh, front of the movie theater and say, can I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen? And we'd be in the back, oh, yeah, howling. Nobody did with this, the balls this kid did. We went to a party one time, nice white people, family, and I said, Rudy, get a chair. And Crowley, get a chair. They had a chandelier. He fucking got a chair, and he got he stood up on the thing, and he pushed up the chandelier. I don't know how he did it. Another time, we're going down the Jersey Turnpike in a truck, and he tied a string around his dick and played with his dick the whole way down Route 3. People were fucking swerving from how high how they were laughing. John Crowley was crazy. <laughs> So at this time in my life, I hung out with John Crowley for entertainment purposes. John Crowley would take his dick out. He'd chase women naked. Whatever you, whatever mission you gave to Crowley when he had three beers in him and a couple hits of wheat reefer. So I'm at the end. You know what he does today? He writes children's books. <laughs> <laughs> he hit me up on uh, MySpace about 10 years ago. Don't you got to help me in Hollywood. Yeah. I got these books. I can't sell them. I did the original music. Now, Crowley, you're fucking crazy. When that song, Mr. Crowley, came out, uh. that was adding gasoline to the fuel. <laughs> that was it. He loved Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. So by him singing Mr. Crowley, yeah. so I, I wasn't at the Palladium show with him. The other show, there was two shows, like you said, they threw him out <laughs> because he took his ID and went up backstage. Yeah. And he said, he's singing about me. Let me in there. I got to talk to him. <laughs> and they escorted him out. And that was the end of John Crowley. That's a true fucking story, though. John Crowley. So he thought Mr. Crowley was yeah. about him. So he was crazy all along. And a state champion wrestler. He was crazy all along. Now Ozzy threw the kiss of death on him. 
So everywhere he went, people would sing to him, Mr. Crowley. <laughs> he said, well, be on my local compadre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was fucking crazy when I went through yeah. with that kid for three or four yeah. years. Yeah, that reminds me how insane our audience was. Insane! Yeah. You know, well, the bat. The bat, the bat threw bat. it right the fuck over. And it was a real bat. You know, we th you know we thought, hey, it's a toy bat, you know, rubber. He that's why he put it in his mouth. You know, it was a real freaking bat. One time we was doing a show in Lubbock, and this is in Lubbock, Texas. This is right after he pissed on the Alamo, so we were like on, on you know, on the lookout because the the daughters of the revolution and Texas militia were threatening Ozzy to shoot him on stage. You know, so we kept every time he would, walk, you know. During the show on stage, he would walk over towards us. We would like run away from him because he, I don't want to get shot, you know, because we thought we was going to get shot on stage, right? So I'm doing the gig and I'm like looking around. I was like really, you know, aware of everything that was going on. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't about getting into the music anymore. It was all about, about surviving the show, you know, not dying on stage. And I see this frog. I thought somebody was throwing a baby at me on stage. No, it was actually a bullfrog. Huge bullfrog. It just landed right in front of me, you know, upside down with his arms spread open and legs, you know. I freaked. First, you know, because in the dark, you don't know what it is. So you look around and, you, oh, it's, it's a freaking frog. I thought somebody threw their kid on stage, you know. They used to, I, I show up with freshly slaughtered heads of cattle trying to get into the gig with that. And, of course, they won't let them. So, you know, our road crew would take Polaroids and bring him backstage and say, Oh, check this out. <laughs> check what this idiot was trying to bring in into the but show. But people were still sneaking shit in because somebody threw a bat on stage somewhere. Yeah, and he the bat. Bit. Yeah, and but, he got rabies. I go to my soul. What yeah, the fuck? Yeah, the head of the, uh, of the cow. Uh, you know, it's, you know, no, it's yeah, completely yeah, fucking it's, different. It's too big, too big. With horns and blood dripping and shit, you know. But then, of course, you know, we used to have the, the, uh, the dwarf, the, the little person, John that was part of our stage, you know, presentation for the Diary of a Madman tour. So he had a bucket that he would drag across the stage while we were playing Paranoid, the, the, the last song of the set. And they would put anything in that bucket, anything that was leftover food from, the, uh, from, from dinner, crew, crew meal, they would stick it in that bucket. And then the dwarf would go across the stage, throwing it at the audience, slowly. <laughs> and and whatever went into the audience, the second half of the song came towards the stage, and I got hit many times by pieces of liver, uh, gizzards, tripes, you name it, you know. And some sometimes they were if they didn't have enough deli, you know, she had to put in that bucket. They they would send somebody out to get some from the uh, the nearest supermarket. And a lot of times it didn't thaw out in time, so it would still be frozen. One time, the uh, John, the little person, he got knocked over by a piece of frozen liver that somebody threw back from the audience. He just knocked them over on stage, and just they took him over to emergency and stitch him up right on his forehead. Oh yeah. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.